The 1930s are remembered for high unemployment and hard times for many American families. From the effects of the Great Depression to the beginning of World War II, the 1930s mark a period in which America and the world underwent many changes. During this time, Wright's High School began to move from a newly emerging school into an established institution. The Great Depression hit both the students and staff at Wright's close to home. The school faced funding cuts in fine arts, yearbook production, and even class schedules, as the school didn't have enough money to pay its staff. To try to lessen some of the factors brought on by the Depression, Wright's worked to aid its community by holding canned food drives and partnering with sewing classes with the Red Cross to make clothes for those in need. Ralph Irons was the principal of Wright's High School from 1927 until the end of the 1932-33 school year. He took the role of assistant superintendent of Evansville Schools after Superintendent John O. Chuning suddenly died. The new principal selected to replace Irons was Homer L. Humpke. Humpke was principal for just one school year before returning back to his job at Evansville College. Leadership was then passed to Assistant Principal M.L. Plump. Plump had served as a science teacher and sports coach at Evansville High School, which was later renamed Central High School when Wrights opened. During the 1930s, golf was the dominant sport on the hill. The opening of the Helfert Golf Course in 1923 gave Wrights students a home course advantage. In 1931, Bob Hamilton entered Wrights as a freshman. That year, he finished second in the city golf tournament. Hamilton's sophomore year, he won the first of six city tourney titles. When the IHSAA began the state golf tournament for high schools in 1932, Wrights was represented at the state tournament five times in the first eight years. In 1934, the team finished 13th, although junior Bob Hamilton won the individual state champion honors. Hamilton would go on to win the 1944 PGA Tournament, have five professional titles, and be included in the Indiana Golf Hall of Fame. Along with golf having great success, the track team had some outstanding records in the 1930s as well. In 1937, the half-mile relay finished in fourth place at state. The members of the 37 relay team included Harry Clark, William Gatlin, Marvin Hale, and Jack Thompson. Then in 1938, the half-mile relay returned to state, finishing fifth this time. The members of the 1938 team included Herb Hape, Charles Crosser, John Cook, and Hardin Boyd. Elmer Weber was a legendary football coach during the 1930s. He served as head coach at the school from 1928 to 1940. In 1930, in his sixth season as coach, Wrights won only its second city and Tiny Ten Conference title. The team was led by All-State player, senior Clarence Chief Ritter, and junior and future All-State players Charles Brunson, John Hickrod, and Charles Felthouse. In 1933, Weber's team finished the season 9-0. Led by All-State players J.D. Elkins and George Freeman, the Panthers claimed a city and SIAC title along with their first state championship in school history. In 1936, the first field house was proposed. It was to be used by the football team along with some of the gym classes. The building would be 30 by 60 feet and was to have two changing rooms, showers, and a small office for officials. When the 1936 season opened on September 19th against Mount Carmel, the teams would get ready in the field house and run out at the start of the game for the first time. Wright's got its first specialized basketball coach in 1929 when Clifford Garrett assumed control of the program. Garrett would lead the boys' team from 1929 until 1936. In March 1934, the Panthers won their first ever basketball sectional title, defeating Elberfeld 42-21. After the 1935-36 season ended, Garrett stepped down with a solid 89-33 record, but few championships to show for it. Tom Ray would go on to coach basketball for the remainder of the 1930s. His 1938-39 team would capture the only conference title in his tenure. The drama department flourished throughout the decade with several shows hitting the stage each year. 
While typically the junior and senior classes would each have their own plays, there were some larger productions that would involve cast members from the four different classes. In 1930, the drama department put on the production The Charm School, in which future Evansville Mayor Frank McDonald played the role of George Boyd. Other shows such as The Bat and The Playgoers graced the school stage and would continue the Wright's drama tradition. The class of 1932 began a great tradition at Wright's. It was the first class to graduate in the bowl. Just weeks before the first outdoor graduation, tragedy struck the senior class. Senior class president Norman Stein died after a three-week battle with septic poisoning. Stein was the quarterback of the football team and a member of the baseball team, as well as National Honor Society and German Club member. In 1933, a longtime tradition at Wright's was started. The club known as the FFA, or Future Farmers of America, was born. The club was organized nationally in 1928 to provide an organization for farm boys and to help them develop leadership and confidence in their abilities. Just six weeks after graduation, the class of 1933's president tragically drowned on June 6th in Gibson County. Albert Gore was only 18 at the time and was highly involved at Wright's. He played on the basketball team and was elected best male citizen of his class. The weather records set by the summer and winter of 1936 preceded the greatest flood that the Ohio River Valley had seen in 175 years. In Evansville, the Ohio River would crest at 53 feet, leaving over half the city underwater. Many Evansville residents were forced to evacuate their homes and the city came together to ensure that everyone had clean drinking water, shelter, and electricity. Students were out of school for three weeks during this hazardous time. On January 26, 1937, Wrights opened as a Red Cross station. The refugee station at Wrights had its own medical team, dormitories, and a kitchen station. The station would come to shelter up to 400 refugees from the raging waters that had taken away their homes and a way of life. The introduction of group music class in 1933 was the beginning of what would become Wright's music department. These classes would be graded just like any other and would make band and orchestra more official and get them to be more involved in school activities. The band would march in parades, play in assemblies, and would compete against other schools in musical contests. Wright's High School was not only a place for education and sporting events, but was also a place where the West Side could come together. Aside from sheltering people during the 37 flood, the school was also a venue for public gatherings. Wrights was home to the 1937 Scott Vandenberg County Fair, as well as annual circuses. The 1930s marked the beginning of many accomplishments and titles that Wrights would become renowned for. The school's presence in the community in times of need and its growing traditions would set Wrights apart from many other high schools and eventually lead to it being the center and pride of the West Side community. This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.